<clears throat> okay, so October 31st, uh, on this day, three important architects were born. Uh, Charles Moore uh, and uh, Richard Morris Hunt and Zaha Hadid. I will begin to talk uh, a little bit uh, about Charles Moore and then I will talk about Richard's, Richard uh, Morris Hunt and then in the end with a much ampler uh, presentation, uh, Zaha Hadid. Initially, I thought of talking just about Zaha Hadid, but because I, I would like to, to be fair, I thought that it's important to also uh, talk a little bit about these two other architects, Charles Moore and uh, Richard uh, Morris Hunt, both uh, North Americans. So, uh, Charles Willard Moore, uh, you see, was born uh, on October 4, uh, 31st, in 1925 was an American architect, educator, writer, fellow of the American Institute of Architects and winner of the AIA, the American Institute of Architecture gold medal in 1991. Uh, he is often, um, sorry for the citation needed, this is from Wikipedia, labeled as the father of postmodernism. His work as an educator was important to a generation of American architects who read his books or studied with him at one of the several universities where he taught. Now, the thing is, uh, I don't know exactly why he's called the so-called father of postmodernism, but his work, um, you know, in the 60s was not postmodern and uh, was, uh, in a strange way, perhaps even the work, uh, the later work was what I might call some kind of a postmodern de post deconstruction, which is, uh, I, I just had this idea while I was preparing this short presentation and it should have been larger, but because we have three celebrations today and this uh, colossal figure of Zaha Hadid, I will just have a short presentation about him. But, it, it will be, I hope, um, you know, uh, a first step towards um, uh, addressing uh, the work of, of this uh, important architect. Uh, so, um, and I will, I will, I will try to explain why I thought of, um, of maybe, maybe I'm not yet uh, uh, totally sure uh, to to describe his work as some kind of a postmodern deconstruction. Uh, Patrick Schumacher, who is running now the Zaha Hadid office, um, said that there were two transitional periods between modernism and, and, uh, and um, parametricism, and these two were postmodernism and deconstruction. But somehow in the case of Charles Willard Moore, um, at least in some works, and I, I regret I don't have more examples here, um, Maybe, maybe we can talk a little bit about a possible postmodern deconstruction. But let's let's move forward. This was the man, and he was indeed important. Uh, you know, in the uh, you know, in the in the fourth quarter of the of the twentieth century. And while I dislike almost uh, vehemently postmodernism in general. I think his work is a little more subtle. Unfortunately, towards the end, uh, yes, he became maybe too explicitly so-called postmodern, but in the period pre preceding the late 70s, I think he did some works which were rather modern, not postmodern, but with a fragmentarism that made me think somehow of, of anticipating even perhaps deconstruction without the, the radicalism of deconstruction. And you see, I wrote here for myself, uh, you know, thinking aloud, postmodern deconstructivism with a question mark. This is a portrait of him that was published on Architectural Review and some drawings, drawings by Charles Moore. Uh, somehow, um, you know, they, they, they are playful, they are, you know, uh, dreamlike, they are, you know, uh, uh, fantastic and, uh, you know, a little bit humorous, but uh, 
after, after dwelling a lot of time in the works of Zaha Hadid with her abstractions and her vectors and, uh, and so on, uh, somehow I like these, these drawings by Charles Moore. Uh, you know, not all works by him are, are, are you know, uh, passing easily the test of, of time, but some are, I think, interesting. And uh, at the time when I was gathering these images, I even began to have a little bit of sympathy. I hope it's not a sign of degeneration but a little bit of sympathy for that period of time when the construction, um, you know, uh, asserted itself. Now, you see, even here in this, I don't know who did this photograph. Um, he is here, but, but you see here some kind of a fractal geometry. And on the right, you see a model of his, uh, one of his houses, which is fragmented and is not yet the deconstructivism of, uh, Frank Gehry's own house, but, but there is something there, you know, he is fragmenting the monolith and he was doing this, um, you know, earlier, 20 years earlier or so. Anyway, um, so I don't know, I just show some, some drawings of, of Charles Moore of, of various kinds. Even this, you know, it's very, you know, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's dreamlike. It's, it's like, a, uh, you know, uh, a fairy tale drawing. And I, I think if architects assume again this fairy tale world, um, it might not be a bad thing. Although, of course, there are risks of falling into what I call cultural infantilism. But he was not, uh, he was not infantile. And you see here in this, uh, you know, drawing, manual drawing uh, with watercolors, I guess, or whatever. He was a cultured and, uh, and uh, you know, willful architect who knew what he was doing. And uh, you'll see his architecture. Uh, too bad that, again, I only show early works by him, uh, one or two works, not, not much. But this is, a, as I said, is an invitation to further study the work, not just of Charles Moore, but maybe also to reassess or to, to uh, reconsider or to, uh, uh, you know, uh, pay some attention to that phenomenon because it was a phenomenon. I mean, you know, it's very easy to dismiss the whole world during those years when the construct, when uh, postmodernism uh, was ruling uh, in, in architecture. Something must have been must have had some validity. There, there was a reason why this happened. Again, I am, um, you know, uh, almost naturally an adversary of postmodernism, uh, almost as a rule. But I think Charles Moore had some some something else in his architecture, and he's actually in his early works. He's actually a modern. With a, with 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 a with a taste for ambivalences for um, uh, fragmentation and uh, this I think is not a bad thing. I mean, like this, for example, this this drawing shows a, a modern building. This is not a postmodern building, but you could say it has postmodern elements in the fact that it is uh, problematizing the monolithical uh, integrity. Uh, or unity of the building. The problem was when when the postmoderns borrowed, you know, uh, in a facile way, um, you know, forms, shapes uh, from uh, from the past, from history. That that was a problem. But look at this uh, plan here. You know, it's it's. I actually like it. It's 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 it's. It's fragmented. It's uh, somehow organic, although the, the the volumes themselves are rather prismatic. But their articulation is, uh, uh, you know, has a vibration. It, 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 it's 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 not it's not static. It's dynamic. Yeah, this is the problem, you know, and this is a big problem in postmodernity. This. Uh, 
this column, you know, this historicist column, which was which was borrowed, and uh, there is a problem with this. This was a book that was published, you know, uh, he was involved, Body, Memory, and Architecture. And, uh, you know, somehow the very title is, uh, I think, appealing, Body, Memory, and Architecture. He wrote it with that to Mr. Bloomer and Charles Moore. But look at this drawing. This is a modern architecture. This is not postmodern architecture. It was not yet affected by the virus of historicism. On the other hand, he has these, uh, you know, uh, fantastic drawings. Anyway, uh, Charles Moore, I think, uh, I myself don't know enough about his works, but I think uh, I, I, I feel tempted to, 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 to uh, study further his works. He worked together with uh, other architects like this, Moore, Linden, Turnbull, and Whiteacre, and they built um, the so-called the influential C ranch in 1963. So this was, uh, you know, uh, a significant time before the arrival of postmodernism. It was a planned community in Sonoma County in California. Uh, and uh, it's an interesting uh, uh, group of, of, of buildings they belong together, but they also have their own individuality. So it's, it's this uh, equilibrium between the private and the public, which I think is, 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 uh, is positive in architecture. And as you can see in the buildings, these are modern, this is a modern, uh, it's, it's described as some kind, uh, some kind of an utopian, um, you know, uh, uh, architecture. In a way, it is in the sense that it, it, it is a, a, a cluster of, of um, individual houses brought together. And so there is a, this communal aspect, but they also could function as, as individual units. And I think this architecture is valid even today. If you build something like this, you would not be uh, you know, out of touch with your time. I think this is a valid uh, architecture, uh, and uh, this, this, I guess it is in the process of, uh, or it was in the process of being, uh, uh, you know, uh, rejuvenating the building, because this is a rendering with the interior of, I don't know exactly what happened to it, maybe it's possible that in time, you know, since it was born, uh, you know, almost uh, 60 years ago, uh, it got a little bit damaged, but we look at, at, at a building uh, that is, uh, I think, still freshly uh, modern and convincingly modern. Uh, unfortunately, later, uh, Charles Moore became uh, himself uh, affected by maybe on one hand, his own uh, uh, interest in, um, you know, uh, fantastic uh, imaginings, architectural imaginings, and also the, the imports from history through the you know, fatal uh, historicism that aff affected uh, postmodernism. Here he is, um, you know, uh, in this building that he designed. And uh, I think there are interesting things here in, 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 this, uh, in this building. And particularly, I would say this uh, uh, conjunction between uh, uh, individual uh, units and uh, collective spaces. And the, the, you know, the, the rooms seem to be quite, uh, quite pleasant. Now, of course, the setting is also very pleasant. But this is again is an architecture that uh, I would say even today would be very valid. It's also true that at the end of the 60s, there was that idealism in the world, not just in the United States, also in Europe, mainly Western Europe 
the protest of the young against war, against obsession, the obsession with money, against banks. Uh, there was the, the music of the 60s that, that had a lot of vitality. So it was a certain collectivism in the air, which is also expressed in the architecture of this uh, cluster of buildings. And here you see the, the plan. Uh, you know, there are the individual units, but there is also a sense of belonging together. And, uh, and this is a positive thing. I have another image with a plan here, a little clearer. So Charles Moore was uh, a skillful architect. And uh, you know why exactly he's called the father of postmodernism, the way I think uh, probably many fathers of postmodernism, maybe even mothers, I don't know, but uh, I, I think these labels are dangerous, you know, the father of modernism or the father of postmodernism. But things are not so linear and so simple and so, you know, uh, clearly cut from a unique cause. Um, anyway, so this is the Sea Ranch condominium that he designed with his partners in 1965. So, you know, um, almost 60 years ago. The interesting things are here, you know, wow. Look at this, uh, this bedroom. There are special innovations and uh, yet the historicism didn't affect his architecture. And uh, that's why perhaps I like more these early works by um, uh, Charles Moore. And the truth is, with all due, all due respect for uh, Zaha Hadid, who designed only one, only one house, you know, so-called the family house. But for that uh, rich uh, Russian uh, man, he designed, she designed just one single uh, uh, house. Um, here we see something. I hope I'm not uh, lowering my standards, but it's it's more humane. It's warmer. It's um, it's less as a money uh, 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 as a manifesto and it's more like a home and uh, you know uh, in a very troubled world as the world we are in perhaps to be able to 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 build a home and not just a house uh, doesn't matter how brilliant is 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 perhaps a good thing. So it's not yet deconstruction, but this fragmentation uh, where you have uh, all kinds of spaces that, uh, you know, assert their individuality, their uniqueness, is, is somehow pointing in that uh, direction. Not in a radical way, but uh, I, think, I think the tendency seems to be in that, in that direction. It must be very pleasant to read, to read the uh, true. Anyway, uh, also wood, wood which was rejected uh, most of the time by the constructivists, uh, and here again wood is acceptably uh, put to work because it's not yet, uh, you know, uh, displayed in a populist or pop way or. Uh, uh, you know, historicist way, as it happened in postmodernism, unfortunately.
Now, why exactly this is called utopian? It shouldn't be utopian at all. In fact, it should be very commonplace. It should be this kind of living where you have your own uh, apartment or little house, but connected with other houses. I think this should be a uh, modus vivendi that is very um, auspicious and favorable for uh, you know anyone on this earth, actually. Anyway, now I'll show the faculty club at the University of California from 1968 in Santa Barbara. He did it with William Turnbull. And uh, again, this is the same kind of architecture where you have uh, various spaces, various uh, units and connected, uh, contributing to a whole. And this is uh, in the context of a university uh, I don't know exactly what this club was uh, about. Anyway, and, and the variety of spaces. There is clearly an interest in, in uh, uh, creating dynamic uh, interiors. Uh, you know, maybe not very surprising, uh, you know, from the perspective of today, but still, I think uh, one cannot deny, uh, you know, uh, what is interesting about these spaces? And both, uh, both inside and outside, the buildings have uh, you know, uh, this uh, positive fragmentarism, as I call it. Yes, there are touches of, uh, you know, a little bit of pop. Uh, there is not everything is, uh, is great, I think, but this is Charles Moore. This was Charles Moore. Uh, and uh, here I only show these two examples of his architecture. I prefer the previous one, but, uh, you know, it's still an architecture which I think cannot be, uh, you know, totally, uh, uh, totally dismissed. Uh, 